Hello, I'm Will Mars, founder and president of Endurica. And today I want to show you a brand new feature that we've just released, uh, the, which is the ability to model the combined effects of aging and fatigue on a rubber part. So let's unpack the new aging feature. Um, what you're looking at on this slide are experimental results, aging experiments, for a uh, model tire belt coat rubber. And these plots show uh, how the mechanical properties of the rubber evolved. In the top left, we've got the uh, fatigue threshold evolution with time. Uh, in the bottom left, we have the critical tearing energy, the strength of the rubber, how that evolves with time at uh, the reference temperature, in this case, 80 degrees Celsius. And then finally, on the right, upper right of the slide, we have a plot of Young's modulus as a function of time. All of these parameters can evolve with time, and um, so we need to be able to represent that in the code. The text box in the lower right is showing the syntax that uh, you can use now in the Endurica solver to define the aged properties and these master curves in uh, the Endurica DT code. Uh, we use tabular functions for all of these, so if it happens in the experiment, you can represent it in your simulation. The code calculates where you are on each master curve using a shift factor that's based on the Arrhenius law which I'm showing on the left hand of the slide. This shift factor uh, tells you how much faster the aging chemical reaction is running at each temperature. So for example, one minute at 100 degrees Celsius might react the same amount as an hour at room temperature. Um, now in addition to a master curve, we also need to give uh, the activation energy and a reference temperature to define our material for the aging calculation. Once we've done this, then the aging rate can be accumulated over the entire thermal history for each element in the final element model. And on the uh, right-hand side of the slide, I'm showing the equation that we use to compute equivalent time at the reference temperature on the master curve. So the end result of uh, setting all these material properties up is a fatigue crack growth rate curve that evolves with time. So if you look on the curve on the left-hand side of the slide, you can see um, a set of curves that have been output from the code for various times. The black curve is the unaged crack growth rate curve. And then as you go from cooler colors to warmer colors, you're seeing the crack growth rate curve that corresponds to that particular aging time. Now, on these log-log scales, the changes to the crack growth curve seem uh, very modest, but um, if you look at the size scale bar, you can see that the blue size scale bar is about a factor of two. So, so the crack growth rate does go up or down, um, you know, a factor of two or three um, over the aging life of this particular material. <clears throat> so um, now when you take this variation into account, run it through the code, and uh, and calculate the strain life curves that correspond to these crack growth rate curves, what we find is a time-dependent strain life curve um, that I've plotted on the right-hand side of the slide, right? The x-axis is life, the y-axis is the peak strain. You can see that if you run the experiment at high cycle rates, 20 hertz or 2 hertz or 0.2 hertz, um, that all of the curves are, are basically the same, reflecting the fact that not enough time has been given for aging to affect the fatigue results. But if you run the calculation at lower rates, say uh, 0.02 hertz and above, right, that's 50 seconds per cycle and, and slower, um, then you can start to see a significant impact, uh, particularly when you have long life um, and, uh, and, and a slow cycle rate. So for example, the red curve has a much shorter fatigue life for a given strain level uh, than, uh, than the unaged material. Let's do an example. This is a tension dumbbell, and uh, it's gonna be cycled from zero to 15% peak strain, like we're showing on the left-hand 
image. Um, now, as we're showing in the middle image, one end of the specimen, the top grip, is heated to 100 degrees Celsius, while the other grip at the bottom is cooled so that it is maintained at a constant zero degrees Celsius. Now, what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and cycle this specimen at the rate of one minute per cycle. And uh, what this means is that about uh, 10,000 cycles is equal to a week of, uh, of exposure time. Um, on the right-hand side of the slide, I've listed out the material property definition that we've made to define the aging properties of the rubber compound. In the aging workflow, both the stiffness and the crack growth properties depend on time. Endurica DT uses a co-simulation workflow that couples with Abacus to update stress and strain fields as stiffness evolves during the problem. Um, what you're looking at on this slide are the distributions of, on the left-hand side, equivalent age on the master curve uh, on the left. Uh, in the middle, you're looking at the uh, final stiffness distribution at the end of fatigue life on the part. You can see that uh, at the top grip, we've uh, achieved the highest amount of equivalent exposure time, right, because that's the hot end uh, of the specimen. And then finally, on the right, uh, we're showing the computed fatigue life, taking into account aging uh, on the specimen. And uh, the fatigue life is predicted to be about 16,320 cycles, which is about a week and a half of time. You can see that in this simulation, we're predicting that the specimen is going to break at the upper grip where we've been holding the specimen in the hot state. And just for comparison, if we turn off the aging and just do the fatigue test with material that keeps the material properties constant throughout the life, then we predict failure at the gauge section like we might normally expect. Um, and we end up with a fatigue life that's much longer, about 800,000 cycles. So that's been a quick introduction to our new aging feature. Um, use it to get durability right. If you, if you uh, think we've earned it, then uh, I'd encourage you to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.